So I actually grew up just west of Edmonton here in a town called Edson, which I'm sure many of you have driven by uh, on your way to Jasper. And uh, I think that brought an interesting perspective to my career uh, in terms of entering the energy industry um, in Alberta and specifically I spent, as Stephanie mentioned, a uh, number of years um, talking about green power in Alberta. So just a little bit of uh, background and I'm sure most people particularly Edmontonians are aware of this but when we think about we don't think about electricity a lot so we turn on the lights in our house we power up our computers we charge our iPhones um, and we don't think about electricity a lot unless that's not on so the word blackout comes to mind then we start to think about a little bit but on a daily basis when we're flicking those lights on and making our dinners um, we're not thinking about electricity and where it's coming from in Alberta, over 80% of our electricity comes from burning fossil fuels. Uh, these are electricity decisions that were made by previous dis uh, generations. So the electricity grid that we have today in Alberta that we're all using, and we, we consciously are using that every day, um, is coming from historical decisions. And those decisions about our electricity mix and the power that we're going to use um, in Alberta really came from um, of a low-cost world. So it was when we talk about energy, it's about the lowest cost and looking for the lowest cost sources, not factoring in externalities around depleting natural resources or um, the environmental cost associated with using some of those resources. So that's the mix we have um, in Alberta. Every kilowatt hour of electricity that we're using in Alberta is producing s harmful CO2, obviously huge impact um, on climate change. It's also producing NOx and, NOx and SOx emissions, which you guys see when you're, if you're ever driving west of the city in the morning and you see that sunrise, it creates a really nice hue over uh, the Waldman area. Um, it's uh, using up water resources. Afra has mentioned that in his, in his presentation as well. So it's having a huge impact, um, and yet there are better ways. So that's, that's where I'm going to go with this. So I'm going to talk a little bit about wind. Um, this map really shows, uh, and, and this actually just a side note about wind. I said the electricity choices or decisions or the, the mix we have in Alberta is really based on previous generations. Well, let's go back a few more generations. And that's really thinking about wind power. Wind power has existed for thousands of years, being used in different contexts. And even in Alberta, um, just I don't know if anyone remembers if their grandparents had a farm and there might have been an old wind turbine on that farm that was part of rural electrification at the very beginning of bringing electricity to the rural communities in Alberta. So, so we have a history of using wind power. It's, it's not a new... Um, concept per se. The interesting thing is, and um, having been in the industry for a long time, I've been using this slide for a long time, but, but constantly updating the numbers, which is good news. Um, we're now over a million homes um, equivalent. So Canada now has over 3,300 megawatts of wind power across the country. It's enough power for about 1 million homes. And, and that's changed dramatically. And I just wanted to touch a little bit on each province and what's happened, well, not each province. On, I'll highlight a couple of provinces that stand out as, as superstars in terms of their wind energy deployment. Um, Quebec. Quebec has a goal and a target provincially to achieve 4,000 megawatts of wind energy itself by 2016-ish, I think it is. Um, and they're well on way uh, to being there. They're at about 660 megawatts today. Um, and you can kind of equate, just to give you a little bit of perspective, one megawatt equals one turbine, approximately. So if you've seen those ones down in southern Alberta, you can kind of equate it that way. Um, they're well on their way. They, their interest in wind is, is somewhat interesting because they, Quebec has a hydro-based um, electricity system. So they mostly use large hydro. We all know about the deal with Newfoundland to bring a large hydro from Newfoundland to. Um, so they're using uh, hydro, and they're using wind as a complement to that hydro because it works very well in their grid. In fact, it works so well in their grid that it allows them to sell more clean 
energy to the U.S. And that's what they're doing. They're complement, complementing their existing mix. Um, they also actually, a big, big push for why wind is being developed rapidly in Quebec is because of the economic development opportunities in the Gaspé region um, of Quebec. I don't know if anyone's ever visited that region, but it doesn't have a lot going for it from an uh, economic perspective. And so they, it has wind. Though. So the Quebec government said, <laughs> we, want, we want to capitalize on that. And they created an opportunity for the market uh, for wind energy to develop by um, providing contracts for wind power in that province. That also required the components to start to be manufactured, um, manufactured in Quebec. Wind is interesting from a manufacturing economic development perspective. There are over 8,000 components in every single wind turbine. So if we have more wind, we have more components, we have more things that can be uh, developed here. Ontario, Ontario has, uh, I've been hearing a lot about Ontario for the last couple of years when it comes to renewable energy. If you put up a solar panel in Ontario, the exact same solar panel you, put, you might put up in Ontario that you might put up in Alberta or Yellowknife, you will get paid 10 times the amount that you would get paid here for the electricity that that's producing. So assuming that solar panel is feeding back onto the grid and you're displacing other power that would have to go onto the grid, you would get paid 10 times. In Alberta, you get paid about 8 cents. In Ontario, you're going to get paid 80 cents. Um, so what that's done, not just for solar but for wind as well, it's uh, developed an a economy for green generation in that province. There's a feed-in tariff for both wind and solar that uh, that encourages those projects to, uh, to come online, and that's why that number is the largest in Canada now, which is 1,200 megawatts. Um, BC, recent announcement, BC was a little bit of a laggard when it came to uh, wind energy, mostly because they um, like to believe they are only green, uh, they only have a green electricity um, source right now, which is their large hydro, although that's somewhat debatable, and particularly with the imports they use from from Alberta, but they have started to <laughs> develop more wind. Uh, one project, 100, this project that's listed here, came online last fall, and on Friday, yesterday, they just announced, um, or was it Thursday, a another several hundred megawatts of new wind that's going to be coming online in that province. Alberta, Alberta actually used to have the highest number on this slide. So really fascinating. Alberta was a leader in wind development, utility scale wind. I'm sure everyone here has seen the wind turbines in southern Alberta, knows what they're talking about, seen them on the news, seen them on the cover of different uh, annual reports for sure. Um, <laughs> and so we've been a real leader uh, in that. And, and the reason Alberta was a leader is because it was really creativity and entrepreneurship. So Alberta has a history of, um, has, a, has a real strong history of capitalizing on our natural resources and obviously uh, we found wind in the province outside of the legislature and <laughs> people, start, people started developing it uh, and it was a function of individual demand so it was a function of consumer choice it was a function of um, people like you and me and businesses making a choice to to take a stand with their electricity dollars and see more renewables be built in the province we created things like Ride the Wind, where the Calgary Sea Train is 100% wind power, so it's displacing amount of power. Most people don't know this. 90% of the energy the government of Alberta uses comes from wind, or comes from green, so wind and, um, and biomass in the province. 90%. It, share this. Share this information. Um, so wind in Canada has grown tremendously. We have an, a fantastic opportunity to see that grow um, even more. We have a world-class resource when it comes to wind in Alberta. We were talking about this earlier. I use this, this sorry to repeat, guys, but um, some of the wind turbines in Alberta have set production records for the amount of wind that they've produced, uh, wind uh, electricity they produce on an annual basis. That's just how good our resource is. It has tremendous economic impacts, including rural economic development. We, do, we generally put these large-scale wind turbines in places that... Um, that, that are rural economies, that are farmland, things like that. So it just helps with, with further investment and jobs in those communities. Um, and it obviously reduces the impact on fossil fuels. And I'll mention a few other things about wind that I think are important to clear up. 
Wind is a reliable source of energy. It can make up a huge portion of our grid. Right now we're at about 2%. It could be up to 20%. It does not require backup generation. Wind power works harmoniously with the natural environment, doesn't harm birds, and it doesn't um, cause any damaging effects. It uh, works in conjunction with existing land use. So when you see a wind farm, emphasis on the word farm, and then the wind, so it's still, that land is still being used for farming, and in fact, the, I can attest that the cattle on a hot summer day uh, down in Pincher Creek will actually move with the shade that the tower produces. A little line of cows <laughs> moving around. Um, so it, it really works harmoniously with, uh, with other uses of the land. So Alberta really has a, a, a tremendous opportunity here. And I'm not here to whine um, about our lack of policy, actually, um, that supports wind energy, like some of the examples I gave. And the examples I gave of other provinces, it's actually still the individuals within those provinces that are making a difference. And they live in a little bit of a different world than we do because they vote on um, their government, um, the provincial government that's going to lead them. They look at the policy environment, you know, um, statements of that different government and make a choice about the government. And then that leads to um, this creating this green economy and, and things like that or banning uh, fossil fuel generation as is the case in Ontario. So it's fascinating. We're, we're a little bit different in Alberta. Um, we don't necessarily do that, but, um, but we have other opportunities. We still have power as an individual. Um, and I think uh, if people have been following Copenhagen um, and what you know kind of came out of there, which was big fat nothing, um, I think we have to realize that it's not governments alone that are going to solve this issue of climate change and that us as individuals, we really do have the power of choice. We have power to create a market and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more and this is actually kind of similar to what Rory was saying in the, in the TED talk we saw, um, which is, the whole concept of value. So when we, um, every day we make choices, we make choices to maybe buy organic food, we make choices to maybe buy um, fair trade coffee, we make choices to um, you know, drive the Porsche Cayenne or whatever it is. Um, and <laughs> that all creates a market for those products, right? These are, you know, we're creating a market and that has stimulated like the companies to build these products and make them available and, and plentiful um, for us. So we really, we really do have power and in addition, that power kind of shows the government and it shows influence to government. And in, similar to those other products and services, we have that same choice when it comes to electricity. We have the choice to, um, to in Alberta, pay 50 cents a day more for your electricity to ensure it's being produced from wind. It's not significant, dramatically reduces your impact. So the, the thinking behind that is what's val is that whole value equation that Rory was talking about and rethinking that value equation. I, just a side note, so it's happily in a clean tech, I'm sure some of you were there, clean tech technology event in Edmonton a couple weeks ago. Um, just a note, they held the same one in Calgary. It had three times as many attendees in Edmonton. So kudos to everyone here, that's fantastic. Um, we were in this great discussion about communicating sustainability and engaging people and um, you know, the, the question came up. Um, someone brought up an example about their t uh, grade 10 son doing a project on um, looking at local potatoes versus import potatoes, so i.e. Idaho um, potatoes. And the the little project team uh, that this, this son was on was, you know, looked at the cost of those potatoes, you know, the local versus the, um, uh, the import ones, and concluded that there's no way anybody's going to pay three times as much for local potatoes. And then they all went to Starbucks. Like, you know, we know where the high school students go at 3.30. They go to Starbucks. And they choose to see value in that equation, right? In that equation of you know, walking around the Starbucks. And that same value, us as um, citizens, uh, need to start to look at that same value equation when we're making other decisions in our life. Um, and I'm, you know, I, I drink Starbucks too. 
So we're all, we're all there. We're making the same choices. So imagine, just for a second, so just imagine your world, and this is kind of building on um, the other innovations that have been mentioned and talked about. Imagine getting up in the morning to natural sunlight coming into your home because it's created, uh, you know, situated in a way so you're achieving passive solar in the home. You go and plug in your coffee pot <coughs> with your fair trade coffee. And you um, glance over at your smart meter, and you s which is situated right in the kitchen, um, right next to the red button. And it's, <laughs> it's sitting right in your kitchen. Um, and you can see how much power you're consuming, that your home is consuming at that exact moment. And what you see is, oh, not producing enough solar power yet because early in the day, not producing enough solar energy yet uh, from my photovoltaic. So I'm actually drawing power from the grid. But hey, I'm, I'm a Bullfrog customer or whatever. I'm, I'm supporting wind energy. That's the case. It's coming from wind on the grid. Um, you get into your vehicle or you walk to work, but you get into your vehicle. It's your electric vehicle, which charged up through the night during uh, off-peak times of energy use. Um, when you get to your office, you, you plug your electric vehicle in again, but this time it's not actually a charge, it's fully charged, you only have a couple kilometers from where you work. It's actually um, producing energy to go on to, back onto the grid. So at peak times at about 3 o'clock, when everyone starts using energy, your car is actually feeding back onto the grid. So it's this whole distributed um, idea of energy. On your way home, you stop at your local store, you buy products that you consider green and have higher value and are with brands that you trust. Maybe they're local, maybe they're green, maybe they're certified. And, and then you go home and what happens? You rest easy is the point. You rest easy because you've made choices every day that have had a positive impact. And what I want to leave with you is the idea that I think as Canadians, as Albertans, as Edmontonians, um, we're, I think we're halfway there. I think we're a long ways into this equation and we have the technology and the solutions available today and it's about conscious um, consumerism and making those choices every day and taking those ideas home. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ted.